Let me circle back to one question for each of you. But please restrict yourselves to this question because I do want to open it up. Apart from anything else, everyone up here is actually on the receiving end of migrant flows. There are people in the audience who are on the delivery end of migrant flows, and I think it's important to bring that part into the discussion as well. But let me ask you this question. Jean-Francois started, I thought, <coughs> with a very important observation. From the perspective of Europe, Jim has broadened that perhaps to the perspective of democracies, we have to find a collective solution to this problem. There has to be a European solution to the challenge of migration, which challenge is going to rise for the demographic reasons described and the realities of the world that we live in. We have to find a European solution that takes account of individual circumstance within the European space. In the context of the United States, there has to be a US solution that takes account of the reality of its neighborhood as well. We cannot have polarization and division destroying the fabric of society <clears throat> and undermining the validity of democratic institutions profoundly. So what, this is the question, what do you think the key elements of a common solution would be to this particular challenge? Jean-Francois? Well, I think the first one could be to see what we can imagine as a European governance. The main problem that we do have to face today is that we have a huge difficulty to find a common path Oh, the interest today between the member states are not aligned on these questions. We know that there is a danger for democracies. We see, of course, the rise of the extremists from the right wing and the left wing. Sometimes, as in Italy, they are able to unify themselves as a coalition of interest, not a coalition of ideas. That's why we are all worrying about what's going on in Italy. But this is because the traditional governing parties are not able today to find what could be a European governance. This is the first thing. The second thing is that we have to take into account the fact that we cannot always point the Europe, the European Union, as a scapegoat. Usually, the major part of the decisions could be made by the state members. The reality is here. Many of these problems of immigration has to be faced and addressed inside of our own countries. And my hope is that after the European elections of next June, we will uh, be fed up with the opposition between Mr. Orban and Mr. Macron and try to come back to a rational analysis. Maybe we can try to convince Mr. Macron to get into the popular European party, which would simplify the debates and make sure that we are able to find a common path. And then it will be my third point. No solution about immigration issues if we are not increasing the contribution to the development of countries who need it today. Of course, we have to monitor it, to share experience with countries from North Africa, even if Morocco is a remarkable model of this kind of cooperation, but also of countries in sub-Saharan Africa. We hear this morning the Prime Minister of Ivory Coast. There are remarkable experiences that have been done in Africa. We have to be uh, beside them uh, because we have the tradition, the culture, the common points to do it with them, and this is a fantastic opportunity. Thank you, Jean-Francois. Laszlo. How much of that resonates with you? Merci. Merci beaucoup. Il me semble qu'il faut faire la différenciation entre les, entre les mots le réfugié et l'immigrant. Aujourd'hui, il y a quand même un amalgame quand nous parlons de tout le monde sont migrants, mais quand oui, même, dans mon, en tant que juriste, 
Je préfère qu'il y ait des réfugiés, il y a les traités internationaux qu'il faut respecter, la Convention de Genève, il y a la Convention de Dublin. En Europe, là-bas, c'est clair. La migration, c'est une autre chose. Et là-bas, je pense que chez les politiciennes, souvent, on parle ensemble ces deux mots. Pour moi, personnellement, c'est très important de faire la différenciation. Un côté. En ce qui concerne les réfugiés, il faut un accord commun. C'est sûr et certain. Parce que les réfugiés, à la base, il faut traiter, il faut dialoguer, dialoguer, dialoguer. Jusqu'à la fin, nous trouvons la solution. Et bien sûr, là-bas, il y a plein d'idées que nous n'avons pas réussi. Le système de quotas. Le système de quotas qui est mort dans la réalité parce que c'est n'est pas un success story euh, en Europe. Parce que nous savons très bien que les gens veulent habiter en Germanie ou je ne sais pas en Suède, mais pas en Roumanie, en Bulgarie ou en Roumanie ou en Hongrie, etc. etc. Alors c'est la raison pour laquelle il y avait des efforts de la part des chefs d'État et le Premier ministre qui n'a pas réussi dans la réalité. Et la question se pose, est-ce qu'il existe un, un seul euh, type de solidarité où il y a différents types de solidarité de la part des États membres. Est-ce que nous donnons pour les États membres certaines flexibilités Alors, comment réagir concernant notamment la migration qu'il faut aider Je suis tout à fait d'accord avec M. Copé, qu'il faut aller sur place, qu'il faut aider. Et à la base, il faut organiser aussi de différents meetings et je pense que c'est indispensable. Permettez que je parle... C'est vraiment mon être personnel que je suis professeur à l'université, j'ai 60 étudiants qui viennent de l'Afrique de l'Ouest, qui parlent parfaitement français, mais qui viennent de Sénégal, Togo, etc., différents pays. Il faut organiser différentes manières, alors, ce type de solidarité. La solidarité aussi, si nous protégeons un pays qui dispose de la frontière extérieure de l'Union européenne, qui fait la protection, elle est contribuable qui paye ça. Alors, je pense que c'est très important. Permettez que je parle deux mots concernant le populisme. La Hongrie était souvent mentionnée comme populiste, et c'est la raison pour laquelle je pense qu'il faut que je prenne la parole autour de ça. Comme jusqu'à destin a mentionné à M. Mitterrand que, M. Mitterrand, vous ne disposez pas le monopole de cœur. Alors ça signifie aussi quand même qu'il faut être très prudent quand nous parlons que le populisme. Quand il y a quelqu'un a une autre idée, une autre vision, qui veut participer dans le dialogue, partie de Léo, souvent on reçoit une, une, une emblette, un label que, euh, populiste. C'est la raison pour laquelle je suis très prudent quand de dire que populiste, parce que quand même la notion de populiste est devenue tellement large aujourd'hui que tout le monde peut devenir populiste dans un moment, s'il n'est pas d'accord avec quelque chose. Alors c'est la raison pour laquelle je pense que quand nous parlons autour de ça, le populisme, en même temps, c'est être quand même, je pense que c'est très important, le dialogue, c'est la seule chose que je crois. Alors, le dialogue avec les différents États, avec la Hongrie, avec la Pologne, avec les autres pays. Mais quand même, si nous étions mentionnés sur les autres pays, sur les populistes, ce ne facilite pas le dialogue. C'est la raison pour laquelle je, je, veux, je voulais mentionner que quand même, c'est un élément très, très important. Et l'autre côté, je pense qu'en ce qui concerne la migration, est-ce qu'un pays veut quand même accueillir les migrants, pas réfugiés, migrants Là-bas, il faut donner la liberté des États aussi. Merci beaucoup. Bogdan. The answer to your question is very simple, but also very challenging. Uh, the answer is that we need more solidarity. Solidarity, and again solidarity, is uh, the, only, uh, the only idea that we can uh, try to impl that implementing which we can defend our values, those values that are not only written and incorporated into the treaties. But it is important to remember that the European Union in the Article 2 of the Lisbon Treaty has the list of those values, as well as the Washington Treaty that is still the base of uh, the alliance has the list of those values in the preamble of uh, of that uh, short treaty. This is the rule of law. This is the respect for human rights and civil liberties, the democracy, free market, etc., etc. So we know what we, f what we should defend. But we need more international solidarity, defending uh, those values in those countries that they are threatened right now and they, that, that can be threatened in, uh, in the future. 
As for the European Union, because, uh, because the answer of the European Union is absolutely crucial, absolutely crucial for itself and for the future of, uh, of Europe, I would recommend uh, using existing uh, uh, tools last, like uh, PESCO. We are talking about that in Marrakesh uh, last year. Fortunately, there was a good decision to introduce PESCO as one of the tools of the European Union that existed for years but was not introduced before. But it is necessary also to uh, create a new asylum policy. It is also necessary to reinforce the control of the borders of the European Union with much deeper, much reinforced uh, uh, involvement of uh, Frontex agency. It is also in, uh, absolutely in, uh, uh, crucial to reinforce the neighborhood policy, not only in southern, but also in eastern dimension of neighborhood policy. How? the neighborhood policy can exist for, could exist for years it, uh, when it had at its disposal only 10.2 billion euros. It has to be financially reinforced in the new multi-annual perspective of the European Union. And finally, I would say we should fight together against those who dismantle the system of checks and balances, as well as the respect for human and civil rights. Thank you indeed. And Jim, you have the last word until the audience. Sean, being a Francophile notoire, my answer is divided into three parts. Um, first part is to begin to treat this migration problem as having important, substantial economic factors involved in it. Uh, in the first place, recognize that uh, shrinking populations mean that immigration is a way to replenish the workforce rather than uh, pretending that you can make yourself great again without people um, by shutting off immigration, uh, which is the primary source of population growth in the United States right now. Uh, the economic problem also extends to not messing up the world's trade system that has brought so many people out of poverty. Um, because the more you can get people to earn their livings where they are now, the less likely they are to leave and try to come to other places. So we need an economic approach to this. We also need to treat migration as a humanitarian crisis, not a problem, but a crisis, because it is at crisis stages now. And much of what we hear um, tends to not treat it uh, with the urgency that it demands. And the third and final point that I would make is that we need to acknowledge honestly, our politicians need to acknowledge honestly the cultural differences, the cultural and social problems that immigration or migration creates and to stop exploiting migration for the purpose of dividing people and making people afraid.